In this video, I take my new online store, Lulu Pup, through the busiest time of the year. After that, there's really no telling what will happen. Along the way, it comes with its fair share of difficulty, causing me to make an important decision that could erase all goals we've set for this month. People are making millions on Shopify. Yeah, it's true. E-commerce more specifically, and if you've been following the journey with my sock store, November was supposed to be the month that we scale up and do big numbers. Unfortunately, I couldn't get myself to go all in with this store because I was trying to go all in with my other more established store. Given that this end of the year, we've worked the hardest and see the most results. We had our best and most profitable holiday season yet several six figure days. We spent six months preparing for Q4. And I think Julie and I can both say that this was an experience of a lifetime. Going back to the sock store, this video actually profiles all the events in November with the original idea that we're going to explode the store, make a lot of sales, a lot of money, a lot of revenue. That's why I went out and built it team, a rock solid infrastructure. But as the month went on, it did not really happen. I kept thinking it would. I kept thinking I'm going to set aside the time to be able to make this happen. I'm going to be able to put all the focus into this, but it it, it did not really pan out like like that. Anyways, we still got some decent results. Watch the story unfold for yourself. It's going to segue us into answering the larger question of how people are making millions with Shopify. Let's rewind really quick to two months ago. I started a custom sock store called Lulu Pup. I did this because I wanted to find out how viable selling an overly promoted product like custom dog socks really is. We've made thousands in revenue, built a virtual team, which all brings us to the end of October where part two ended. Can we turn this into a six figure or even seven figure business in the next 30 days? As orders are coming in, I begin to see early indicators that our systems won't be sustainable at scale. So if we get to a point of doing $10,000 a day, we'll most likely have to turn off our ads to prevent things from falling apart and being destroyed by customers with reviews. I need to bring in another partner, and one person that immediately comes to mind is this guy. Meet Marcel, my Facebook group moderator and longtime follower of my content. One of the most loyal and trustworthy people I know who has experience building and managing teams. Marcel is actually working on getting his own store off the ground, so asking him to come and partner with Jude and I is a bold proposition. I need another partner in this business. I wanna get your thoughts on it right now, and before mm -hmm. I continue, before I continue any further. Marcel accepts my offer and I'm thrilled. So yeah, um, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you got two thumbs up. I move Jude to customer service and Marcel to fulfillment. I give them guidelines for what to build out in their departments. I also sent you five videos that outline the system that we were using for fulfillment. Go through it. And as the days pass on, they do just that. My next objective is to give them the green light, making sure they're 100% confident to take ownership over their department. This will allow me to focus on ads and driving traffic, not fulfilling orders or writing SOPs. So basically, um, if the so five bucks just for us, right? And uh, so like yep. So refund the entire order. Twelve days into the month right now, and Marcel. So. With where we're at, let me preface you with where we're at with things. I messaged him the other day. He's been doing taking care of fulfillment now for about a week. And I asked him yesterday where we're at with things. I said, hey, how close are we to be to, to getting orders fulfilled in 24 hours? And he says, no, we're close, as I'm still training the staff and building things out. And I what I want you to do, just because I know with something like this, it's not like art, it, it's an it's an easier process. And we only have like see, the thing is a lot of these orders have been sitting for for days. Hey Marcel, I'm kind of at a place right now where I don't really know what to do as far as advertising the current team that we have in place right now. Go and contact all of them and basically introduce yourself to them, tell them who you are and that you're taking over the fulfillment side of the business. I'm at a place. You're <laughs> stuck hard. at a crossroads because you don't want to, you're saying you don't want to Here's yeah. the thing, Marcel is good, he's very good, but at the same time, I wanna make sure that everything that he's built out is gonna be optimized for scale. I told him I'm gonna get on a call with him, but he doesn't know that you're gonna be here. Oh, he really doesn't. He really doesn't. Okay. 
I wanted to put Julia and Marcel in a room together just because in the main business that I manage with Julia, she does a phenomenal job with the fulfillment team and what she manages and overseas, which by the way is a really large operation, it's what we're trying to replicate with Lulu Pup, just a few minor tweaks. So I think that Marcel could really benefit from this. Sorry Marcel for putting you on the spot here. I, I think you'll thank me later. So with all the orders in queue right now, is it more of a training thing or is it more with an optimization thing? It's, it's a training thing because the orders that came in today are already designed by the designers. Is there a timeline? Is there a timeline in terms of as soon as designer is done that it needs to be fulfilled, like a deadline, it must be done? Definitely, four to six hours. We need to control the designers because if we do not control the designers, they're going to control us and our flows will just you know, control them out of the window yep. because it's not going to work anymore. I guess I'm kind of a, a, a bitch in some sense because with my team, I, did, I, I don't say we want you to do this. I say you must do this because mm -hmm. there's other people in line that will do it. Yes. Right? This is an, exactly. oppor this is an opportunity. So you kind of got to get stern. I never say I, I, I want you to do this many by this time. I just say it must. I'll give you however long it, it should take in this, but I'll give you a, a full seven days to, to get the hang of it. I need you to hit this caliber because I know it can be done. You know, I, I give a couple warnings and, and just I get on call. If, if someone struggles, I'll get on a call and figure out, okay, what's right. the issue? Where, where's the I issue I mean, did, at? didn't you just let somebody go? I did. And this is because the same exact thing you're talking about, same thing. Um, she says she can do this many. She's devoted. She's there. She can work this many hours, but then doesn't really show up. So I warned her. I warned right. her, got on calls with her, and then just had to let her go. You know, I just started the ads up again end of last week. So say 500 orders per day. So it's like forecast how many people you might need for that and just make sure they're trained. Regardless yeah. of paying and for training, like, I mean, we being behind on orders, I mean. The that... number one thing, <laughs> the number one thing I have learned in many years of e-commerce through trial and error is worrying about money and funding will get you nowhere. It'll actually get you to the back seat. You'll, yeah. you will I, I, suffer. I've, I've lear very yeah. much learned that. So Julia, I completely agree because I've been around the block for a long time as well, but this is not my money and this is not my story. <laughs> even better, Marcel, even better. It's Chris's money. I want to succeed, yeah. but not on the expense of Chris. Expenses to me are not an issue considering like looking ahead like long term yeah you, you have term. to do what you have to mm -hmm. do so i don't do what you need to do marcel and there's always filing bankruptcy if you have to yeah <laughs> funny <laughs> i'm kidding i'm kidding and Listen, that's not chris's name yeah that's not my name so do you want to like maybe wave or pat him on the shoulder goodbye or bye marcel <laughs> but i'm patting you on the shoulder she's patting me <laughs> <laughs> Did you see what he did? He okay, so with that, Marcel gets the green light. And I really have to hand it to him. He was working nearly nonstop for days building this all out. Can you, can you do that thing? What the fuck? I'm now left with Jude. Let me start off by saying she's been doing an amazing job so far collecting product content from influencers and keeping up with social media. I give her the structure as far as what we want for customer service and she fulfills it very nicely. We always bump into new things along the way, new situations. Oh, I bet. And what I would do is like just add them up. And Jude has the green light. We're all aware of our obligations to ensure that things flow nicely. You guys, I'm just gonna say phenomenal work the last few days. Now as the days pass, we're doing over a hundred dollars a day in sales, but still not profitably. Okay, so let, let me tell you what's going on right now. We just got the logo. So we, we have a bunch of logo designs right here that we're gonna look at with the store because apparently our logo is not good. So now that we have cash flow coming in, we made the decision to invest in a better quality logo. So a lot of these designs are not good. They're not, I mean. I can already tell. The stocking that doesn't even look like socks for the ears and the, the mouth is throwing me off. It gives me this weird Japanese anime type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Honestly. And it's also like, for being such a small logo, it's also too busy. Too Something is, yeah, yeah, it's too busy about it. It needs to be like straight up, boom, icon, boom. Icon. Yeah. This looks like my niece drew it. Is it a dinosaur? <laughs> okay. Or a blob? Too realistic. 
This feels like Blue's Clues to me for some reason. <laughs> it still looks like someone on an iPad drew. To me, it's just too much space. Yeah, something I don't love about this. I don't like the face is kind of weird. <laughs> Out of them all, I'd say this is the best. Out of them all? Yeah. Well, the bottom. we have three I like the, options. Uh, I think that this one... Yeah. I mean... I like the dark blue next to the that, that light blue, that baby blue. I do like that. Uh, for Lulupup right now, we're at about $3.3 thousand dollars in revenue for the entire month. Now, you know, it's not where we want to be. Yeah. Now with my other main store, and again, we've been in business for about two years now. Zero to about well, half a million dollars in about five months time. We did about $50,000 yesterday. Now, the thing with this store is what we're selling right now, we were one of the first to sell these kinds of products back when they first came out. We're building up tens of thousands of customers, about $10,000 away from hitting that million dollar mark. And then once we get to that million dollar mark, we scale the business to $10 million. It allowed us to become what I really see as an industry leader and we're able to have a long-term sustainable business selling these products, no matter how many other big players come into the market, selling what we're selling. Now with the socks, it's a little bit different of a story just because just because there's already tons of big players devouring the marketplace with their really, really big ad budgets. We're a very new store. We have a small customer base, so we don't have a lot of customers at, that, that we can leverage for email marketing and massive sale campaigns. And one of the ways to combat that and to really jump over these issues is by introducing something new that the public hasn't really seen a lot of $90 if we sell the posters. I haven't done that. And after talking to Marcel, I'm thinking that's what we're going to do. I'll be honest with you, my focus has been the socks ever since starting the store because that's what the YouTube series has been built around. We're making a pivot. Look, $3,300 in revenue might seem great, but not really. 15 days into the month, I put $4,300 into Facebook ads to achieve this, giving me a loss of nearly $2,400. And that's not even including other expenses. Look, I'll be honest, I don't see us getting to a point of profitability this month selling these. I want something nearly untapped that I can scuttle the moon with, that I can do in half the time that it would take me trying to get these sites figured out. What I'm looking for in a new product is A, minimal to no saturation, and B, high profit margin. Our new product line will revolve around custom pet portraits, offering an array of costumes, very similar to these royal pup portraits that are just booming right now. Doesn't look as realistic. It kind of has a little bit of an oil painting effect, which makes this canvas a little bit more special than just using the pet photo. We'll take it up a notch by also vectorizing the costumes and pet heads. We may be changing our product line, but that does not mean our infrastructure will be changing. Marcel and Jude only have minor tweaks to make, which still puts us 10 steps ahead. It's just a matter now of finding a winning design that can be profitable with ads. I'm going to start selling canvases using Guggen as our print on demand partner. If I sell at these price points for these three size options, I can pay an average of $35 to acquire a customer, a big step up from a measly $17 selling these socks. I do some light research on Etsy, which is enough for me to come up with my initial brief. Fast forward, I test a few designers that can vectorize pet photos and find the one, the one whose work exceeds my expectations. I have my first few designs, create the products in the store, and get right to Facebook ads. Now, my ad strategy is a little bit aggressive when it comes to spending, but I want data quickly. And if we're heading in the wrong direction, I need to know sooner rather than later. I start with a conversion campaign with three creatives, directing all my traffic to the Canvas collection. I have four ad sets running with my best and rest audiences. A day passes by and one sale came in. Not the results I was hoping for, but I keep it running for a few more days and see no promising results. I create a few more canvas designs with different costumes and put them to the test. Days pass by and the same result. The buyer interest just isn't there to make this profitable with my ads. 
It's the last week of November. The month is coming to an end. I need to find a winning design and quick if I want us to actually experience Q4 with this new store. If we could just get to $1,000 a day, it's going to be much easier to scale and see great results thereafter. Knowing that all these designs flopped, I think I have a general idea of why. They're too basic. It doesn't make me laugh or think, wow, this is totally unique. So that revelation led to these designs. If this Royal Pup stuff is booming right now, I ask myself, what kind of costumes can I make that will be similar, but still not the same? And so I fell into this vortex on Etsy, which soon led to these three new products. I put them to the test with my conversion campaign and four interest audiences running at $30 a day. And the results started off sour, but just when I was about to take a step back and reevaluate this product line, things started to get interesting. All right, so it's December 4th, and I'm really proud to announce that we have found an offer that is working. We have some profitable Facebook ad sets. The first week of December, we're doing hundreds of dollars per day in sales. Only this time, we're closer to profitability. And literally a day before this video goes up on YouTube, we hit that $1,000 day with profit. Take a look inside the ads manager. Every ad set that generated sales for this 1K day did it profitably. Now it's just a matter of scaling this up and erasing our thousands and thousands of dollars in previous losses, mostly trying to sell these socks. Full transparency, I was at the Chase ATM almost weekly depositing more money into the business account just to keep things going. I'm not sure how much I've put into this. Honestly, I haven't had time yet to calculate that. This is a new store and spending money to get things going and figure out what works like we did here should be an expectation. So let's cut to the chase. How exactly are people making millions with e-commerce using platforms like Shopify? Well, in a very similar way to Lulupup. Ideally though, you wouldn't start off selling socks. You'd sell something a little bit higher margin that's not as saturated, but still has a little validation. Let's look at my own seven-figure e-commerce brand that's done nearly $8 million in sales. We're two years into this journey, but started in a very similar fashion to Lulupup. We built a print-on-demand store, with personalized products and eventually narrowed in on one that allowed us to build a sustainable business around. For the last two years, this is how we've made our money. Putting our blood, sweat, and tears into this since then has been the most rewarding experience of my life. We might be making millions in revenue, but what about the profit? Just yesterday, we did $76,000 in sales with about $14,000 in profit. On a yearly basis, we'll see a similar percentage of around 17%. So off of 2.9 million in 2018, it was close to about $500,000. Of course, we don't take all of that. We leave a lot of it in the business to keep leveling up. Considering we took the entire profit from the business and sustained those profits with the business year over year, then well, we'd have millions of dollars. But the way we do things, we invest a lot back into the business because we're building an asset. Many of the richest people in the world have made their fortunes selling their companies. Look, I'm not the only one who has made this Shopify thing work. If you look at Brennan from Pet Party, he got into the sock game way earlier than I did. He's done multi seven figures in revenue and has a team of over 30 people. And he's 19. One of my favorite brands, Iconic, I'm almost certain they started with print on demand. Over the years, they built a full-fledged company partnering with influencers like Gary V. I created a very similar store almost two years ago. Check out a few of the designs. Unfortunately, I couldn't get passionate about it, so the store did not last for long. Another favorite of mine, Unifury. I think I'm saying that right. Very big on personalized products, the night sky, lifelike pillows. The list goes on with people just like myself who have created some pretty awesome and successful Shopify stores. Lulupup is here at the bottom of what we'll call the e-commerce totem pole. With lots of work and dedication, I have no doubt that this store can get to the level that my seven-figure store is at. But let's look beyond this, beyond print on demand, the model that I'm using for both my stores. We have High Smile and SandCloud, amazing brands that have turned me into a raving fan. We could even go as high as Jeffree Star Cosmetics. Him and Shane Dawson broke so many e-commerce records a few weeks ago, it's insane. I'm surprised that more people aren't talking about this. Why is my site broken? <sighs> 
So what's next for Lulu Pup? Let's say that our goal was to propel this into a seven figure store and build a raving customer base. Well, we could do that. As time passes by and let's say we build a stack of cash, I'd eventually sell the store and reinvest my earnings into building a more high level brand. When Julia and I sell our e-commerce brand, we have goals of advancing to new levels of business because we'll have the means to do so. I'll be honest, I created the store to help with my YouTube content. We'll probably do some scaling this month, but after that, I'll probably pass it along to someone I trust.